Hi, I'm Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist. I specialize in treatment-resistant depression, and I've been in practice over 30 years in New York City, and uh, I went to Georgetown Medical School, which was a great school. They really cared about the students, and it was really interesting. And I did my uh, residency at Columbia Presbyterian in New York. And what I'd like to talk about is the risk factors for depression. One of the biggest risk factors is having parents who have depression, because a lot of it is genetic. So uh, uh, if you have one parent that's got uh, severe depression, you've got a fairly good chance you'll, you'll have a problem with it too. If both parents, your risk will be even higher, obviously. Another risk factor is your childhood. Childhood abuse really raises the risk of depression as well as uh, bipolar disorder. So studies have been done, for instance, with uh, uh, children that are adopted and they're adopted into good homes where they're not beaten or, or uh, mistreated. And the ones whose biological parents had bipolar disorder or depression, they have a higher rate of, of, uh, of the illness. And then uh, other studies have been done of children who, whose, parent, who, whose parents were abusive, and sometimes uh, the children were actually adopted into an abusive household. And the abusive household itself raises the risk of depression, chronic depression, and uh, depression in the context of bipolar disorder. Now, bipolar depression just means the person has some highs. Maybe they're really manic, very high, maybe just mild highs. But they're, usually their main problem is the recurrent depressions, especially as they get older. And the abuse can be verbal or physical or sexual abuse, and, and they all have a terrible effect depending on how terrible the abuse was. Uh, another risk factor, ironically, is uh, alcohol and, uh, and people uh, who drink a lot and are single and unemployed uh, they often have a depression, and their depression often, much more often than other people, will end up in suicide. It's very protective to be employed and to have a spouse. Helps keep people away from the risk of uh, suicide. Now, another risk factor is smoking, is cigarettes. And uh, about... 20 years ago, it, uh, it was found that people who smoked had a higher rate of developing panic attacks. Now, this was a big surprise because um, usually you think about smoking as calming you down and, and being an anti-anxiety agent. Now, some of the anti-anxiety effects is because you're addicted to the, to the tobacco, so when you smoke, you feel better because now you're taking care of a little bit of withdrawal. But it really alters the receptors in the brain. And if you've altered these receptors in the brain over time, then uh, 10, 15 years later, there's a higher rate of people having anxiety disorders and panic attacks. Now, likewise, there's been some studies indicating that people that smoke have more depressions. Um, I remember one study, I believe it was in Brazil, where they followed people who had uh, relatively severe depressions where they would get hospitalized. And those who smoked had more hospitalizations for depression. And it seemed, it's hard to prove this, but it seemed to be causative that the smoking caused the increase in, uh, in uh, major depressions that would end up with hospitalization. And then those of us that don't get such severe depressions that we get hospitalized, there's uh, some evidence that it increases our risk for depression in particular. Now, when you first stop smoking, 
it occasionally makes people very depressed. When I, I was smoking pipes and cigars and, and I stopped a few times and then one of the times I stopped, I, I stopped completely 20 years ago, but one of the times I stopped, I really got depressed. And, uh, and that sometimes happens. But, but the long range effect may well be that smoking keeps you uh, having these repeated depressions. And uh, so for other reasons also, you should uh, not be smoking. Oh, another, another reason is inflammation. I forgot about that. There's so many, so many things that are affected by inflammation and many medicines that help out heart disease also help out depression. You know, especially the statins, or especially taking fish oil pills, and uh, and those things, among other things, they reduce inflammation in the body. And a high inflammation level is associated with more heart attacks and more depressions. What I was going to say about uh, smoking and depression is, smoking raises the risk of inflammation. It, well, it causes more inflammation because you're taking in this smoke and this causes all sorts of inflammatory hormones in your bloodstream. And that has long been known to increase the risk of heart attacks, but now we know it increases the risk of depression also. And this may be why uh, some treatments and diets help out both depression and heart attacks. So the, so the major things that cause depression are your family history, having uh, experienced a lot of childhood abuse. Now, sometimes having uh, a long period of being under enormous stress, like your husband is chronically ill for years and you're taking care of him and you're worried about him dying. And, and when he breathes funny, you wonder, did he stop breathing? And that's, very, that's a long-term trauma, which really causes some post-traumatic stress disorder. And post-traumatic stress disorder basically includes two things, a lot of anxiety and depression. And, uh, and you treat the post-traumatic stress disorder frequently with anti-anxiety agents and antidepressants. And uh, other risk factors are, uh, as I said, alcohol, tobacco, and just bad circumstances. Uh, sometimes if, if somebody's in a terrible shape and they, they have no money, they're not employed, and everything's going bad, and then they get a really good job, and then they have a nice girlfriend who comes along, sometimes that'll change everything. You know, they move a lift. Although it's uh, not always so because sometimes our depression is just very chemical and that's that's just the way it is and so even when everything good happens you say gosh why am i still depressed and it's because it's an illness like high blood pressure or diabetes is just a chronic illness in many of us and what about the genetics about the what genetics the genetics are you know i i don't know i don't have the precise percentages But if the your, genetics are if your very father high. Was depressed and yeah, your mother... if your father's depressed, you got a very high rate. But depression is really common anyway. About 10% of us, uh, the population, suffer from recurrent depressions, either chronically mild depressions or some that are coming and going. And, uh, and then if you have a family member who's uh, a close family member, brother, sister, or parents that have... Uh, a uh, severe problem with depression, then your risk goes way up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.